In 1958, Thomas Merton, a Trappist monk and a famous mystic, had a religious experience in a crowded shopping area in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. Looking at the people walking around, this is what he wrote. It was as if I suddenly saw the secret beauty of their hearts, the person that each one is in God's eyes. If only they could all see themselves as they really are. Pope Benedict once said that our bodies are the visible expressions of the presence of the Holy Spirit. There is, in other words, a spark of the divine, something of God in all of us. And so be it with Jesus. Just as the timeless love of God overflowed into creation, so in a precise moment of human time, the love of God came down to earth and made its home in the womb of Mary, who gave birth to the child Jesus. Over time, the child Jesus grew in awareness of that inner spark of the divine, of the person that he was in God's eyes. And this awareness was then put into words and actions that expressed most completely the divine heart of God. Indeed, it is Jesus who shows us time and time again in the Gospels that God has a heart in the way he speaks to people, treats them, consoles them and forgives them. Like Thomas Merton, Jesus clearly saw the inner beauty of all with whom he engaged and treated them accordingly. I'm not sure if the traditional devotion to the Sacred Heart that our parents and grandparents practiced captures this understanding. The human heart of Jesus was understood, it's true, as representing God's love for humanity. But at some point, I think the focus of the devotion shifted away from contemplating the divine love that God has for us all and instead became focused on our cold and ungrateful responses. I don't know how many of you remember the hymn, Sweetheart of Jesus. In other words, the belief was that we were not loving Jesus enough. And the irony is that, humanly speaking, we're incapable of loving Jesus enough. So a healthy devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus has to focus more on the ways Jesus loved than on our poor responses to such great love, on how he loved his friends, outcasts, sinners, indeed enemies. As I understand it, it is precisely because God understood how poor we were that the divine heart became a human heart. As the priest prays when he adds water to the wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Christ who humbled himself to share in our human life. I want to finish this short reflection by stating that I do believe that there is still a place in Catholic spirituality for devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, providing 
we focus more on the love of Jesus than on ourselves. I also believe that it can help our faith to grow if sometimes we step back and think about the heart of God as that space, that eternal space, in which you and I and everyone else lives and moves and has our being. In this way, we can give thanks to God, not just for loving us, but for loving us through the heart of Jesus and inviting us to share in the here and now in their divine life.